Many students cheer with absolute joy when they see implicit differentiation. But what about this one, Mike? Y equals x e to the y show that this differential equation is true. So we're going to do that by obviously differentiating this. Yeah. And there's different ways you guys can do it. Here I see the second derivative. Here I see the first derivative. If you guys want, you could differentiate this once, sub it into here, differentiate it twice, sub it into here, and show that both sides are the same. Um, but let's see what happens even when we differentiate once and decide if that's something we even want to do. So I have y is x e to the y. How do we differentiate something like that? Let me switch pens. Well, oh, beautiful, mate. dy by dx. We have two functions. This is going to be product rule, okay? So we differentiate the first term, 1 times the second plus, differentiate the second now, e to the y will differentiate to itself, but we are differentiating with respect to x, so we're going to write dy by dx next to it, times the first. Okay, so this one's a bit of a sticky one because, you know, we are differentiating, but we have dy by dx in two places. It's not really going to be quite, it's not going to be nice when we sub into there. So, I think we're going to have to take a different route here. So we have dy by dx is e to the y plus x e to the y dy dx. x e to the y dy by dx. Now when you look at that, all right, so could we differentiate again as it is? I don't think so, because if we go term by term, yeah, that's cool, but I'm, you know, a bit worried about that one. How do we differentiate that? Now, you could split it, so it's this and this, and then do product rule on this, and then this can just differentiate to the second derivative. I think maybe in this case, rearranging for dy by dx might be nicer. There's no real right answer here, but let's just do it. So we'll bring that to here and factorize out dy by dx. So... When you bring that here and factorize out dy by dx, this brings out a 1. Then this would be minus uh, x e to the y is this uh, e to the y. Okay. Maybe you want to differentiate like this. Maybe that's nicer. Uh, because here you'd be doing product rule and product rule within product rule. Uh, it can be a little bit nasty. So, in fact, you're just doing it anyway here. There's no real right or wrong answer with some of these uh, more challenging questions. But maybe I'll do it down here. Uh, let's apply the product rule to this. So we're going to differentiate term by term again. So differentiate the first term, d2y by dx squared, times the second term, 1 minus x e to the y. Uh, another thing actually we could have done here is, because what I'm going to do is, I was about to do the product rule, right? And I'd have to differentiate this again. However, if I look back up, now I'm noticing that I didn't actually need to do the product rule again. I could actually replace this with y. I understand the concept now. So, let me backtrack for a second. Maybe this, I could have just replaced with y. Remember guys, the whole point about maths is to try and make your life simpler, all right? When it comes to more difficult questions, it's okay to carry on doing something, realize that actually I can backtrack and make my life simpler. Definitely do that, okay? Because now I'm going to differentiate term by term, and this is just going to be a lot easier. So remember this said uh, x e to the y, right? x e to the y is just y. So now I'm going to differentiate term by term again. I'm going to do d by dx. Differentiating that again, I get d2y by dx squared. e to the y differentiates to e to the y, but I'm going to times it by dy by dx, plus product rule. Differentiate the first term. dy by dx differentiates to dy what? dy by dx times the second term, which is dy by dx, plus differentiate the second term, which is d2y by dx squared times the first term, y. Okay, that's interesting because this, I'm seeing the d2y, the dy by dx all squared. 
This though is a bit of a sticky one. Uh, I don't really, s I mean, I see dy by dx, but it's the squared part. So I don't think I want to leave this as it is, but what could I replace it with? Maybe I could replace it with what I've got up here. Maybe I could find out what dy by dx is. I definitely want to collect the dy by dx's. I can see where that one minus y is coming from. So if we bring that here and factorize out d2y by dx squared, I'm going to get this being the coefficient of one, then this will give me minus y. So yeah, this is the, the issue, isn't it? So I have e to the y dy by dx plus dy by dx all squared. I mean, I have dy by dx all squared, bracket two minus y. Could I factorize somehow? Because if I can factorize this from this, I would need two dy by dx all squared, which I don't actually see right now, minus y lots of dy by dx all squared, which again, I don't really see right now. Okay, so we're gonna have to backtrack somewhere and see where we could potentially get that from. Maybe here, I can see e to the y, and I can rewrite e to the y in terms of dy by dx, right? All right, let's see if it works. Let's see if we understand the concept now. So here we have e to the y is dy by dx minus y lots of dy dx. Minus, what was it? Y, dy by dx. All right, let's plug in here. Forget about this for a second. This is more important. So, e to the y, dy dx, is gonna be multiplied through by dy by dx. So I'll get this squared. Okay, that's good. It's looking good, dive. All right which when I plug back into here, I need to add dy by dx squared. Aha, uh -huh. that makes that two. Yes, mate, it's looking like it's appearing. So I'm gonna get d2y by dx squared, one minus y is this, which is this. I'm just gonna be very explicit with my working, minus y, dy by dx squared plus that final one. So when I add them, big up Adam, one minus y is two dy by dx all squared minus y dy by dx squared, which we then factorize it out and we are left with a beautiful solution. Now I'm curious, how might you guys have gone about this problem? So this was purely implicit differentiation, maybe kind of written in a slightly different form, but it always, well, it worked in this case. I'm showing you guys how we can use implicit differentiation in terms of dy dx. You don't always need to rearrange for dy by dx. So if you had another method, let me know in the comment section. And if you learned something today, hit that like button and subscribe for more mass content like this. If you're interested in my full courses, check the link in the description. I'll see you all in the next video. Nice. No